Hello and welcome to the garden. So today I'm going to be starting off my summer squash and cucumbers. Now you could sow them in a variety of different sowing mixes, but the one thing that's really quite important with all of the plants of this family, so that's the summer squash, winter squash, cucumbers, melons and so on, is that they, they don't like sitting in soggy compost. They're quite prone to rotting around the stem. So in order to avoid that, whatever you sow into, you wanna make sure that it's really free draining. So here I've got um, some seed sowing compost. This is actually a combination of a multi-purpose compost and some coir. But to make sure this drains nicely, I've got some quite sandy soil here that I'm going to add and then plenty of horticultural grit. And those two components are really gonna help with the drainage. And I think I'll add a bit more grit to that. So this now has quite an open texture, it's not going to clump together, it's going to drain quite well and the uh, squash and the cucumbers are not going to sit in overly soggy compost and that should be quite good for starting these off. So now to the varieties, now the first three varieties I've got from Seeds of Italy and for summer squash Italy's not a bad place to look because the courgette or zucchini was first grown in Europe um, in the area around Milan. Um, so there are lots of good Italian varieties of summer squash. So the first one is Striato di Napoli. And if you can make out in the picture there, this produces um, fairly pale green fruits with some darker striping. Um, this makes a very good courgette um, and you can take them when they're quite small and they're very good. Um, but it will also make a pretty good marrow. So you can let this grow and they will get huge if you, if you leave them on there. But they will do so without, um, without becoming too insipid or too wet. So um, even when the fruit are quite large, the, the flesh is still pretty good quality so if you if you like a marrow then in our experience this variety will produce some pretty good fruit. Um, the next one I've got is a new one to us this is Tromba di Albenga so that comes from Liguria in northern Italy and this forms um, potentially quite large curved fruit with a bulbous end and it's in that bulbous end where all the seeds are. So I understand that this is typically taken as you would a courgette or zucchini um, when the fruits are on the small side, but this one can be allowed to mature um, much as you would for a winter squash. And that's because this is more closely related to say a butternut squash than it is to a courgette. So I've never grown this one before and it's going to be interesting to see what that is like. Um, I plan to take most of the fruit um, as a summer squash, but I'd be quite interested to leave a couple on, on the plant to grow on to maturity and, and see what they're like in the winter. Um, so those are the two summer squash I'm growing this year. And then on to the cucumbers. So. I've got two ridge cucumbers and a greenhouse cucumber. Now, although, although the ridge ones are usually grown outdoors, um, I have sometimes put them in the greenhouses and they do fine under cover as well. I often think that the ridge cucumber has the better flavor. Um, so I've got the, the 
more or less ubiquitous market more here. Um, that always produces well for us and, and the fruits are pretty good quality. Um, and then I've got the old Long Green Ridge. So that's, um, that's a classic old Ridge cucumber and I will be growing both of those varieties this year. And one greenhouse cucumber, Telegraph. So that's the, the classic old variety. Um, it's probably not as popular now as it used to be, probably because um, the fruits are pretty big. So um, you have to really like cucumber to um, want many of the Telegraph fruits. So those are the varieties. I'm gonna be starting these in small pots and I think I'll sow two seed per pot. I've got plenty of seed in these packets, so um, I will then take out the, the weakest of the seedlings. So first up is the Striato di Napoli courgette. So these seeds are oval and flat and I'll just put these in on their sides. It probably doesn't make much difference but if anything that will help to shed excess water. I'll just set two seed in each pot. Cover with a little bit more of the sewing mix. I'm not firming that down too much. And then I'll give that a reasonable amount of water to start with. So now I will pop those into a heated propagator at around 21 degrees. Um, if I didn't have space in the propagator, I would take them indoors and leave them in a, a warm position. Um, the seeds should germinate within a, a week or so, and then I'll pinch out the, the weaker of the two, assuming both germinate. So I've given them a good watering now to get them started, but from this point on I will be rather sparing with the water and um, the last thing I want is for those seeds to start to decay before they've had a chance to germinate. So next up I have the Tromba di Albenga. So next I have market more. These seeds are rather smaller of course than the squash seeds. I'm actually I've got so many of these. I'm going to set 3 in each pot. And exactly the same for the long green ridge. And finally the telegraph cucumber. So that's my summer squash and cucumber sown. I will sow the melons and winter squash in about a week's time. Um, the winter squash will benefit from warmer conditions when we plant them outdoors and the melons similarly will enjoy some warmer conditions when we get them into the cold frame. So I don't want to start those off too early but the, the cucumbers and the summer squash I want to get them going now so that I've got 
robust plants to set out when the time is right. But that's all for this video, so thanks very much for watching and bye for now.